Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Getting started with QuickBooks Online, a quick and easy guide. There's a lot to go through here, and Intuit as a company, the company who makes QuickBooks, of course, has done a great job of marketing the product and, you know, letting you know that it's a program that's very easy for anyone to get into and use. You would almost think you don't need an accountant or an accounting professional to help you with it. And that's true to a certain extent, but only a certain and frankly very limited extent. Once you get beyond the basics, you really do need to consult with somebody who understands. Not, it's easy enough to figure out how to fill out forms. I guess that's what I'm trying to say in QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online is what we're focused on here. It's I can pull up an invoice and you can see it's really clear where the customer's name goes and where the terms are. And you can pick your items and put them on the invoice and choose a quantity and a rate and it calculates the amount. The basics are very easy, but it's when you start getting into understanding where these transactions need to land on the balance sheet or on the profit and loss, and they start not landing in those places. Or as a business owner, you look at it and you start saying, hey, my accounts receivable doesn't look right. I don't think people owe me this much money. I'm pretty sure those invoices were paid. That's where you need to get uh, an accounting professional to get involved and help you. But for now, I wanted to give you an overview of the basics in a quick and easy guide. So it's so easy to do. You can do it even if you're not an accountant. Let's take a look at my screen and see what I'm talking about. We're talking about QuickBooks Online, and I mentioned in the write-up. So if you're watching this on YouTube, check the description for a link over to where the write-up is. So you can uh, get the link that you can use to access this very same demo company in QuickBooks Online. So I want to give you, like I said, the overview. So first, let's look at the navigation from the home screen. And keep in mind, things change. They roll out updates about every six weeks. Usually, they're minor. But every once in a while, you'll get a major change. So if you happen to be watching this, and it's a long time after I originally recorded it, understand that I may have a newer version to cover a newer interface when that inevitably happens. So let's look at the navigation. We have navigation on the left, and we have navigation across the top here. This little guy, it's called a hamburger menu. When you click on it, it just zips up that navigation on the left so you can get it out of the way and have more real estate to work with when you're on the screen that you want to be working on. Right? So on the left navigation, you have your major centers, your banking center. right? And notice here we have the banking. And here are the uh, bank feeds that we would link up where you would connect your bank account and configure it to download. You simply add an account and walk through the process. I'm not going to do that here. That's another video for another day. But it's very easy and straightforward. Uh, And then here we have bank rules. So when we have our bank accounts connected, we can create rules. This is pretty standard in cloud accounting software these days. Uh, But where I can go in and I can create a new rule that says, you know, when you download a transaction with the word Starbucks in it, book it to meals and entertainment expense and code it to the payee Starbucks, right? Simple things like that we can create that make the matching process go much faster when we're updating our banking in these accounts. So that's your banking center. Um, And then the rest of the centers are in here. We'll go through some more of them in this video. We're not going to cover it all because, again, this is an intro and an overview. But the next thing I want you to see here is the gear icon. This is one of the first things you're going to want to get into when you start a new company in QuickBooks Online because this is where all your settings live, right? And in fact, the first thing I like to do when I've set up a new company in QuickBooks is actually click on this option here, Account and Settings, and I go through the settings step by step. Again, another video for another day to actually do it. But I want you to see where it is so you can click on here and go through it. Managing users, everything you need with respect to settings in QuickBooks Online is here. That's why it's a cogwheel or a settings wheel, as I like to call it. Right? And we also have access to our lists and then some tools, right? importing, exporting data, reconciling, budgeting, and so on. Um, so that's what the settings wheel or the cog wheel is all about, the gear icon. Um, next, we're going to do the quick create, which is this plus sign here. We call it the quick create because it's where you go to quickly create any kind of transaction you could ever possibly create. And then it's organized essentially according to you know, the right area. So if I want to create a transaction that has to do with a customer, I'm looking here under customers. right? If I want to do something that has to do with vendors and expenses, I'm looking here under vendors. Right? And then, of course, employees and payroll are here. And then we have other for some of the other stuff that either doesn't really tie in directly or might overlap between several of these, like a bank deposit. 
right? A transfer, journal entry, statements, and then we can do inventory quantity adjustments. I have another video that shows you how to do inventory value adjustments. It's a workaround because the built-in feature really only enables you to adjust quantities and not values. So that's what's in the quick create area. Really, really important to spend some time going through this, going through the settings or the cogwheel or the gear icon, <clears throat> and just seeing what your options are. That's how you're going to learn and get acquainted with this and know it really well. And the more you do that, the more when the time comes, it'll trigger the memory. Oh, that's where I go to do that, right? You want to customize invoices or, or your forms, that's here in account and settings, those kind of things. All right, so next we're going to look at lists. And notice here, I can go to the gear icon and I can go to lists, but I want to show this to you another way. So we're going to get out of the gear icon and we're going to go to the left, right? So let's talk about sales, right? Because the first thing we're usually excited to do, especially when we have a new business, is we want to start posting invoices to customers so we can get paid, right? We want to get that money in so we can use it and start building and growing the business. So when I click on sales, across the top, you'll have access to all of the lists that you would ever need having to do with sales. So the first tab here, I'll call them tabs, is all sales. Now this, of course, gives you a list of all the sales-related activity, the invoices and sales receipts and payments and time charges because you can enter time in QuickBooks Online or integrate time tracking software like ClockShark or T-Sheets, right? So all that stuff can be synced over to here and come in as a time charge, which can then be used to put on an invoice, by the way. So all sales is just that. And of course, you can click on these colored filters to filter it for just what's overdue and so on and so forth. Over here, you get a list of just invoices, right? Which, by the way, in all sales, you can filter it and say, for uh, type, just show me invoices, which is what this actually has. Um, so next, let's go over to the customers. And this, of course, is a list of all of your customers. Now, especially once you have a lot of customers, you're going to want to use the search, right? So if I type Diego, it finds Diego Rodriguez, and I can get right in here. So if I want to focus on a particular customer, this is how I do it. And notice from here, I can create a new transaction specifically for this customer. And it's got my list of all the same customer-related transactions that I would find here under the quick create, right? But here I'm telling it specifically I want to enter a transaction for Diego Rodriguez because that's the customer I'm looking at. Let's click back out to sales here. And finally, and I thought this was great when they added this, is access to the products and services list right from here. It makes sense when we're in the sales area. So if you have a new product or service that you're offering and you want to add it in, this is where you can go to do that. So that's the sales list. Now if we go to expenses, we have something very similar, but for that side of things, we have a list of all the expenses, and here we have a list of vendors. There's no products and services list because we don't sell products and services to vendors. We buy products and services from vendors, right? So here it's a little simpler, but we have, again, our list of all the expense transactions, and you've got a filter here, so if you're looking for something, there's a quick way to find it, right? And then we have the list of vendors and similar to customers. I can call one up from here, and of course I can go over here to create a new vendor, right? And if I go into a vendor, I can create a new transaction, all the same kind of expense-like transactions that show up here under the quick create, right? So your basic transactions here for vendors. So that's your expenses and vendors list. And then the other thing that I think it's important for you to know right away when you're getting started with QuickBooks Online is the accounting center here. And from here you have your chart of accounts and also this is where you can go to reconcile accounts. You want to always reconcile your bank accounts and your credit card accounts. But before you can do that, obviously, you've got to get the transactions entered, right? So here it's giving me this because it's assuming I'm looking at it for the very first time and it's just giving me a quick, hey, take a peek under the hood. Once you click here where it says see your chart of accounts, that's where you're going to go to. And again, I have my chart of accounts, which is a list of all the accounts. Everything that lives in QuickBooks, as far as every transaction goes, it all ultimately lives somewhere here in the chart of accounts, oftentimes in two or more accounts. So, for example, if I write a check to uh, Staples to buy office supplies, then that transaction is going to live in my checking account because I wrote a check out of the checking account, and it's also going to be living in my office supplies account, or in this case, we have office expenses further down the list, but as you just saw, I use the search to bring it up quickly. And of course, if I want to add a new account, that option is here, and I can also import accounts into the chart of accounts. Reconciling is going to become really important once we've got transactions in the accounts such that we can reconcile them. And reconciling is very important. It is the process by which you confirm that everything that should have been recorded was, and it also has a way of filtering out anything that might be in here that doesn't belong, right? 
So this is where the reconciliation process happens. From this dropdown, you'll be able to access pretty much any balance sheet account. But mainly, you'll want to focus on reconciling your bank accounts and your credit card accounts because those are the accounts that give you monthly statements with a clear-cut ending balance to reconcile to every single month. Really, really important to have that process down, right? So that's our list. I showed you the sales, I showed you the expenses, and I showed you the accounting. Those are what you need, I think, just to get started right away. If you have payroll, of course, you'll go into your employees. And then there's the reports, but again, that's another video for another day. The reports are something you're going to want to get deeply into after you've gotten started with QuickBooks Online and gotten a bunch of stuff in here so that you have something to report on. Right? And then the last thing I want to do is talk about some basic transactions. Right? So outside of that, you know, if we have um, an invoice to produce or if we've received income from a customer, we're probably going to want to go into sales. We're going to want to go into a customer, produce an invoice, and then we'll receive a payment on that invoice, and then that payment gets deposited. But let's say I just have a deposit that I want to make. Let's say I'm taking money out of my own pocket to contribute it into the business because I'm just getting started and I've just opened up a bank account, let's say with $1,000. Then we're going to click this Quick Create, and we're going to click on a bank deposit, and we're going to go right into here, and we're going to call it, we have an account for this called Opening Balance Equity, and we type in $1,000. And of course, the rest, you know, you can fill in. It's all pretty straightforward. Check, and we can call this Account Opening Deposit. And that's how you get that initial account opening deposit onto the books. You'd hit Save and Close, and that goes and gets put onto the books. Right? And then the other thing that you're going to want to know how to do right away is how to record expenses. You're starting a business. You've probably written some checks to people. So again, in the Quick Create, under Vendors, we can record an expense or a check. Now, the only difference between these two is that an expense is going to have a reference number and a check is going to have a check number. And the reference number could be left blank, such or used, you could use something like uh, EFT or debit if you used your debit card to pay for something. Right? It's just a way of distinguishing that money went out of the bank account, but not by way of a, an actual paper or printed check. It was some other kind of an expense like a debit card. This is also what you can use when you select a credit card account to record a credit card charge. So this is how you get an expense on the books. And the rest, again, pretty straightforward. Like I said earlier, at this point, you're just filling out forms. So you're going to put in the payee, you know, Home Depot. And if you need to, you can add them in real quick as a vendor, save, and we're going to call this repairs and maintenance probably, something like that. And I'm looking here, as a, we don't want to do it as a sub-account of labor, this would be our internal repairs and maintenance, so maybe here to uh, building repairs or something like that, right? So you want to be clear about where that's going, and the beauty of QuickBooks Online is if you're not sure, just duplicate the tab. Make sure it's completely loaded. Close out of the transaction that we're entering. Go to accounting. And we go to our chart of accounts and I start typing repairs. I do this a lot when I'm recording transactions because I don't want to duplicate accounts. I don't want to create accounts that we already have accounts for just because it was named something a little different. So I always check before I add a new account to make sure that I really need to. right? And so here you have a little bit better visibility into what all these accounts are. Right, and be careful because the more letters you type, the more filtered the list becomes, right? So if I just do rep, right, I've got anything that's got REP in it, right? And so I have maintenance and repair income, I have maintenance and repair expenses. So if I know for sure that it's building repairs that I want, then I'll click this and it's in expenses and be careful with something like this because it could be fixed assets, right? And then I can actually just paste it in and it'll find it. Right? It doesn't look like it grabbed the parent account properly, though. But it did. It's all there. Good. And then, of course, you put in a description, explain what you're buying at Home Depot and why. You put in the amount, 152.80, whatever it is. And it's that easy to get an expense on the books if it was a credit card charge. Even if it was from the bank account, you do checking. And over here in the reference number, you might put something like debit or EFT, indicating that this was an electronic transaction. And like I said before, not a paper check. Mind your date. Here, the payment method would be check, or if it was a debit card, you might put even something like Visa, or we can add new, right? And I'd be inclined to actually add a new payment method specifically for debit cards, because that can get confusing for people. So those are your basic transactions, so you can get deposits recorded and get expenses entered in the books just to get started. 
That, my friends, is getting started with QuickBooks Online, a quick and easy guide. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, if you need some therapy, no, I'm kidding about the therapy. Don't call me for therapy. I'm terrible at that. Um, but if you have questions about QuickBooks Online or anything else that you've seen me cover in our blog or on our YouTube channel or anywhere, if you think I've had the experience, you're welcome to it. Just reach out to me and ask, and if need be, we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one session and get you through whatever you might be stuck on. We'll get you through it promptly, quickly, and we'll get that session recorded so you have a video to refer back to afterwards. As always, I hope you had some fun here and learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.